I'll be watching. I'll be, I meant to say I'll be reacting to 86 episode 4. <laughs> and I'll be watching it from Crunchyroll's website. Yeah, I was about to start my video. I'll be watching it from Crunchyroll's website for some reason. I almost had a brain fart there. And I'll be starting my reaction to 86 episode 4 in 1, 0, go. Oh man. You know, that is a great point when it comes to her watching it from a warm and safe place. Ah, uh, when they put it that way, yeah. I could definitely see where they're coming from. You know, that's a good point because whenever she talks to Shin, she only refers to him as Undertaker. Aww. I'm not gonna blame him, considering what went down. I mean, hey, anyone in that spot would have done the same, though. I don't think... I don't think he... I don't think there really wasn't, was much he could have done in this scenario. But in saying that, though, I just wonder if... Every single time in 86 is going to be involved in combat... It's making me wonder, are they going to do this in every single instance? Or is it just going to be in this specific instance? Because... If they're not going to show the perspective of uh, the Undertaker and their crew, I just wonder how the series is going to do things. But other than that, though, I was a big fan of everything else episode number three did, though. Now, the biggest question is, uh, how is Lena going to respond to this? I wonder if she's going to start trying to look at the minor details, like asking for their actual names now, or... Man! Maybe she's going to try to dedicate more of her time to trying to find ways of... Um, making sure that the 86s have a higher chance of survival and she's going to put herself at more risk. Like, there's a lot of questions that come up. Hmm. Oh, that's a cute little scene there. Oh. Hey, the folks looks pretty badass if you ask me. I mean, hey, considering what happened, I'm not gonna blame. Ah! <laughs> what do I want to do with her, dude? A little bell. But I think, you know what, that uppress is going to help Lena grow in the long run, though, because sometimes you need to, do need to be hurled towards adversity for growth and self-improvement. So even though they might have any reservations of what he said, I think it could lead to something beautiful. Hmm. 
<clears throat> All alone and dangerous and ours at their end. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm lucky to think Shin stands there. I mean, if they're constantly in epic action, things such as reserving uh, resources or reserving their tech, doesn't sound like they have, they're going to have much of an option doing that. The only thing that can help is Lady Luck that they're not forced in a position where they got to wreck their gear. That's the only thing they can hope for. Just hope that things can stay in their favor as long as possible. Hmm. Oh, he's going to be in for a shocker once she shows up again. Oh, boy. Because something like that's not going to make our girl quit. Hell no, it isn't. Blitz. I still think they should have shown her death on screen. And yes, people can make the argument that they're trying to make us feel the perspective of Lania. No, they really should have shown it because if they're going to handle every single conversation in this series by just off screening deaths, then that's going to make this series full of lifeless. If it does it for every encounter, now if it's only for this specific one, then it's not going to be that bad. But I've seen animes where they start doing things like off screening certain big events for one thing, then they do it for the rest of the series. Like last season, Geki Idol did it, Adelie Prime did it, Wave Surfing did it, where, oh, first scene, oh, they just skipped an event, they won't do it again, and then they do it again, again. But I have more faith in this series than those other ones from last season, though. But just to let you know my worries as to, the as to why, I am slightly worried. No, that's where she's wrong. The thing that Penrose needs to consider too is that... Yeah, how would she feel if people didn't know her name and they just referred to her as her working title? No. If anything, our girl could probably think about it even more. Yeah, but it could just be a lack of experience, though, that screwed over. Jeez! I mean, she, when she puts it that way, I can see Penrose's perspective, but I still think it's better to try to get closer to the 86 instead of trying to I want him straight up. Good, good. Yeah, but sometimes the advice given with the best of attentions isn't really the best advice to be following, though. Oh, she didn't even need her put down. Hmm. It's nice to get a bit more of her past here. You know, if some of the other recruits were to see some of the frontline action, maybe they would have gotten a similar perception of things. Like, Lena would, oh! But then again, we're seeing there that that's definitely not something that can just be done casually. But that feels like it'd be the best way, though, even with the risk factor involved. Huh. <sighs> I 
wouldn't blame her. She'd be just like all the others if she didn't see the district. And to risk himself in making sure that his daughter knows the truth is pretty darn badass, if you ask me. But the thing about war is there has a tendency for innocence to be drawn into and there has to be wrapped. It's just the unfortunate thing. I don't know if that's the case, though, because... You know, Elena might end up become... No, I think she's gonna become like her dad, but it's a much more extreme version. It's my gut feeling. Yes! Man, I love hearing those type of words. From her. But there's no one to seek ideals though. There's no one to aspire to higher heights and sometimes some of the innovations innovations in life are because people aspire towards something higher. The thing is though, no one's gonna know if it's truly impossible. If no one tries, so I'd say she should still give up still give it a chance and keep on trying. And the way they say ethically responsible drones in the news media, my goodness, I love it though. It shows you how deep the brainwashing goes. Now it's brainwashing the whole populace and seeing the 86 as things less than humans. She's gonna push it differently by asking some casual things like Undertaker's actual name for starters. Hmm. Okay. I mean, hey, it takes a strong person to recognize their mistakes and to admit them straight up immediately afterwards. Hey, you know what they say, better late than never. But we're... Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking last week. Yes, well, they had some rights because he was right in certain bits because, yes, she didn't necessarily make the situation herself. All right, good. The thing is, though, those handlers are built different from Lena. Lena is built different.
That's good though. And I love how she still keeps on pressing Shinja learn his real just to learn his real and all the others too. I and mean, when she's that determined, who could say no? Who could say no to that? Oh. Aww. And this is actually one of the few seconds where we see Shin talk with a lot of emotion like that, too. We got snippets of that in the previous episode. We're getting more of it here. And that's amazing voice work from his voice actor, because even though we can't see his face, just by the voice, you can tell just how much emotional toss there is in this specific scene. Huh. Oh. oh, that's that's really dang sweet. Every single time he, they show him, he looks like the entire weight of the world is on his shoulders. Oh. But hey, you know what, Lena can change that. Well, she can start changing some things. I mean, hey, she should go for it. <laughs> Fuck it, you better do it! <sighs> I wonder if he's gonna take him to Thale first. I would wanna see Thale's reaction. a beautiful song playing in the background. Oh, it's so, a- no! <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, wait, there's more. I thought the episode ended for a bit, but then I saw Crunchyroll's um, episode timer, and it's on 18 minutes and 21 seconds. There's still five minutes left, so. Good, good. Crunchyroll had me worried, though. I was like, wait, wait, wait. That, that did not feel like 23 minutes at all. And thankfully, my gut instinct was right. All right, magnificent episode. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this one a nine out of 10 because Hands Up to the Sky by Swano. Oh, God, I mean, it's a beautiful song. I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10 because for one, this episode had lots of amounts of character development for Lena. She's now asking for the names of everyone in the unit that she's handling. She's Finally acknowledging her weaknesses and that she's going to work towards improving that That what she's doing isn't good enough, but she's going to inspire Towards trying harder. I love that The thing is, so it's different from learning their names from, say, a person and hearing it from me. Yeah, it looks like she's finally learning. Hey, might as well do it. <laughs> oh, I already love you, but I absolutely adore him now. Wow. Hmm. 
Oh. All righty. Damn, that is badass. Aww. I mean, hey, I'm not going to blame Theo for having that stance. But hey, it's fair. I love that though, we got to see Theo's full mindset. <laughs> I mean, hey, she, considering the concept of how most Al Albas are, I'm not gonna blame Sugar one bit, but that's. Still take the strong person to admit their faults like that. And him none of them will blame him for having that perspective. Hey, alright. That's part of Lena's charm, though. <laughs> oh, I like it kind of just sit it hesitantly. Ah, uh, with that edge in her voice. Okay, okay, there's more. I thought I was gonna I was like, no, I need more. And thankfully, there's more. That felt like it would have been a good spot of any an episode, though. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, too. We haven't heard his name yet. Hmm? Oh. Oh, boy. Oh, what could have happened there? Ha! <laughs> oh, damn, that was, oh, fuck. All right, I'm gonna bump up my score more. I'll give it a 9.25 out of 10. Those final sequences were badass. I was like, yo, it did, it did something extra shit. Whenever a series does something extra, I'm like, you know what? I'll give more points. Yeah, why, why the fuck not? Why the fuck not? Fantastic episode. Shit. I mean... I ain't gonna lie though, episode 3 had me worried for the series. I was like, please don't, don't end up like most of the animes in the winter 2021 season because I saw everything in winter 2021. And the, the series seemed like it was going to start falling off the same pile. It, start, it was going to start skipping off emotional sequences. And I was going to be like, no. No, please. And then uh, not just the winter 2021 season. A lot of animes in the 2020 season. I mean, 2020 year did that too. But that's where most of my worries came from. Because when you start watching uh, pretty much almost every modern anime, you start to get paranoid about modern anime. Thankfully, though, the series... Uh, it prevented itself from doing that. And that's what I adored. Because something else I love about this episode, aside from Lena's character development, I love Shin's character development because, for one, it was nice to get to see him actually do some solids for Lena and he helped out patching things between Lena and the others. I thought there was something really beautiful about that. And I also loved, too, how you saw Shin. 
He did try to help patch things up between Thale and Lane in a subtle way. That's I love stuff like that. And other things I love too about this episode. I love the fact that I mentioned circumstances regarding what happened to Lanio's father and just seeing the way he died. Well, hearing about it, what, shit, that, that got to me. I was like, man, he was a real dude. But in saying that, his loss was a necessity because if there's going to have to be any hope in changing the system, it's going to have to start with one individual. And I have no doubt that that one individual is going to be Lana who's going to cause that change in the status quo in the series that needs to change. And, I, and that's what I love too about this episode. And then aside from all these elements, the aesthetics were pretty, great music, great voice work, and that's why I thought the episode was worthy of a 9.2 of evidence. And like, this episode is just absolutely magnificent. But, anyways, y'all, these are my thoughts on the episode. I would love to hear your thoughts on how I feel about some my reaction, or the episode itself in the comments section below. Hope y'all share the video if y'all want to, and I'll bid y'all well, or a great and safe day. Hope y'all have a great fun, some fantastic day or weekend, and I'll see y'all later to come back for more. But anyways, y'all, thank y'all so much for watching my video, and bye-bye, everyone.